with the idea of making superstars just as popular as Cena because with Cena's recent shoulder injury uh, and injuries to come in Cena's future, you can't always wear out a superstar who's been there for 10 years time and time again. You can't always rely on a five-star quality match from CM Punk and John Cena. You have to have CM Punk and other rivalries. You have to have other superstars and John Cena as uh, you know top wrestlers. I agree with that formula. What I don't agree with is the way that CM Punk's been representing not only WWE as an enterprise, but himself as WWE Champion. Coming out saying how he regrets, um, you know, supporting the fans and how they wanted ice cream bars, how he wanted the place to be fun again, standing up for everybody against Triple H and John Laranitis. I mean, is atrocious. And just shoving it in our faces that he's the best wrestler in the world, you know, I have this to say, you know, prove you're the best wrestler in the world. If you beat The Rock at the 2013 Royal Rumble, maybe then I'll believe that you're the best wrestler in the world. But maybe then, if you defeat The Rock, you'll cheat, just like you have since becoming a heel more often than I would like to say that you've cheated. But even with you cheating, you've defeated a lot of people as heel, just as many perhaps as when you were a face. But I think that the first part of CM Punk's WWE Championship reign, without a doubt, was the most astonishing part of his lengthy reign as WWE Champion. Over the last year, I think the first six months as CM Punk as WWE Champion really was a crucial time for CM Punk because the first six months was a great representation of one of your most popular superstars. He shared a connection with the fans that was absolutely unbelievable. CM Punk was at an all-time high in his career and more importantly the first six months helped WWE Creative determine as a franchise if CM Punk was the guy that they were going to bank on to be WWE Champion for a lengthy time. WWE was in search of a guy they could put the championship on as long as Hulk Hogan from 1991, Bret Hart from 1994, and they found that within CM Punk. And I think one of the biggest X factors that contributed to CM Punk's lengthy one-year reign as WWE Champion uh, was the fact that they wanted to do something with CM Punk and nobody knew what to do with him in the early part of his career. He came from Ring of Honor, he had such a phenomenal reputation working with people like uh, Samoa Joe, Christopher Daniels, and many uh, top superstars who went on to achieve fame. He comes into WWE, nobody knows what to do with the guy, nobody knows what kind of gimmick to put on him. They say, okay, you're straight edge, you've never smoked, you've never drank, uh, and he goes from that to being a guy who becomes a, a popular superstar seemingly overnight just as quick as John Cena. And John Cena was even promoting CM Punk the way he's promoting Ryback now by saying that CM Punk was the only guy that could give him a great wrestling match out of anybody on the Newtown Mr. roster. I remember when CM Punk was fired after shooting on Vince and John Laranatis. He was either fired or suspended. Uh, John Cena came out and didn't really agree with the idea of firing or suspending CM Punk because he believed that CM Punk gave John Cena matches that John Cena wanted to have night in and night out. If you look back at the CM Punk-John Cena rivalry even before CM Punk became a WWE Champion and he jumped off commentary one night and announced that he was going to be returning back to the ring having a feud alongside the Nexus with John Cena as part of the new Nexus. Uh, I think that this rivalry between John Cena and CM Punk even before Punk was champion is CM Punk's greatest rivalry out of every rivalry he's had since his arrival in the WWE and he's had many rivalries over the years with JBL, John Cena, uh, Chris Jericho, Daniel Bryan, Kane, The Undertaker. He's feuded with the top names in the WWE, both legends and new talent industry stars. His greatest rivalry without a doubt, without there being any question in anybody's mind, was the rivalry with John Cena and I'm still waiting on one more CM Punk John Cena match. Have it inside of Hell in a Cell like it should have been last month. Uh, you need one more match to give this feud some finality because this has definitely been not only the greatest rivalry of both careers of Cena and Punk, but one of the greatest rivalries that we have seen in WWE in some recent years. The only guy, uh, apart from John Cena, that could give you a good quality wrestling match with CM Punk is either a toss-up between Chris Jericho or Daniel Bryan. Cena and Punk are matches I would pay hundreds of dollars to see both on pay-per-view and live and in person because uh, they're great matches and you're almost guaranteed no matter what the match is, no matter what the circumstances the match is being fought under, no matter what the stipulation is, uh, what the outcome of it is, you're going to go away from a Punk-Cena match 
talking about it. And that's why I really didn't agree when I first heard about Punk vs. Ryback for the WWE Championship. Uh, it was pretty much a dead giveaway that Ryback was just replacing John Cena, and the original plan was to have Cena and Punk inside of Hell in a Cell, with probably Punk winning again to prolong his WWE Championship reign. I was impressed with Punk and Ryback's match and their exchange inside of Hell in a Cell. I'm looking forward to the first time ever seeing uh, Ryback, Cena, and Punk in the same match. You take Ryback out of the match, you put The Rock in there in the place of Ryback, and you have what I believe is going to be the WrestleMania 29 main event. I know it's a long shot, but Punk versus Cena versus The Rock seems to be the most likely match you could have opposed to The Rock versus Cena, and it would give us a feeling of novelty. And I alluded to this in my column. You know, it makes perfect sense to have these three in a match because Punk said in his promo from last year, one of the best conclusions to a Raw since the Attitude Era, I alluded to in a column I wrote some time ago to end off the column in the final sentence, uh, that the fact that, that he was so pissed off was because The Rock had taken the main event of WrestleMania 28 away from him. So you throw Punk in there into the equation with Cena and uh, The Rock, like you did The Miz from 2011, only have Punk there in a competing role, uh, I think that it would be great, um, because it makes perfect sense. It makes more sense than actually having The Rock versus Cena Part 2, because the only thing Cena versus Rock Part 2 is going to be promoted off of was the incredible match they had at WrestleMania 28, and two and a half months is not enough time to promote Cena versus The Rock Part 2. You need at least four months. Uh, to promote The Rock vs. Cena Part 2 because you look at how great the storyline was leading into WrestleMania 28, how much time these guys were given to promote the biggest match in WrestleMania history, which it was, apart from Hogan vs. Andre from WrestleMania 3 in front of 93,000 fans, uh, which made history. I think it really was because the amount of time they were given, they are pressed for time with this match and, uh, you know, having Punk in there as a third individual in the match makes perfect sense and you can read my column uh, The Rock's Future as WWE Champion I believe it's called for In This Corner with Jonathan Clark in our column archives um, to back up what I've been saying as proof it really needs to happen and if it doesn't happen at Wrestlemania 29 I think myself and a lot of radio shows, columnists and wrestling fans especially are going to be let down. I say give us Punk, Cena and Rock for the WWE title for the first time ever if CM Punk is really the best wrestler in the world at the beginning of 2013, from uh, the Royal Rumble up until WrestleMania, he'll be given the chance to prove it. Have him go into WrestleMania as champion, have him defend the title against two of your top superstars, a future legend and a legend without question. And if he gets past WrestleMania 29, then I will come on here and admit on a public forum and put it over this microphone that CM Punk is the best wrestler in the world until he defeats The Rock in either a singles match or both Cena and The Rock in a three-way at WrestleMania, I refuse to believe it. But if he does, if he gets past The Rock of the Royal Rumble and both The Rock and Cena at WrestleMania 29, if that match takes place, I'll put out over this microphone that CM Punk is the best wrestler in the world. I'll admit to you, I was a CM Punk fan the first few months of him being champion, probably especially the first five months of him being WWE champion, I was a huge CM Punk fan. And after I seen this metamorphosis that CM Punk went under this past summer on July 23rd when Raw 1000 kicked off the three hour era and how CM Punk put himself over by taking out both The Rock and Cena in the same segment in the final segment of Raw after the big show and CM Punk uh, double teamed uh, John Cena at the end of Raw 1000, I kind of turned on CM Punk and I've been disgusted with CM Punk ever since. I was a CM Punk fan the first five months of his WWE Championship run, you could say even six months. Um, but once he metamorphosized into a guy that I couldn't stand, um, I just started to dislike CM Punk from week to week to week. And I even started supporting John Cena more, which is something that I rarely do. You rarely hear me say anything positive about John Cena. The only thing positive, really, I've said about John Cena is how he supports breast cancer now and his earlier years in WWE, perhaps probably the first two years of his career when he was a heel character coming up making fun of his opponents by rapping uh, to them in a 30-second rap prior to the match. Uh, that's the only thing I liked about John Cena. And if he were to revert back to the Doctor of Thugonomics, yeah, I'd be all there for John Cena. But this uh, C-Nation shit... Uh, is something that I'll never approve of, something that I'll never like, uh, something that I'll never enjoy because it's just an overall promotional way 
to benefit John Cena just as having everything being about CM Punk is just a stupid and pathetic way of promoting CM Punk. Best wrestler in the world, I say prove it. Uh, he's definitely had an impressive resume accumulated for himself over the last, I'm going to say, 11 months um, because he's defeated everyone from The Miz and Del Rio in 2011 uh, to Dolph Ziggler to Chris Jericho to Daniel Bryan to Kane. He's done it all. There's no arguing or disputing uh, what CM Punk has done. I just I just refuse to believe that he's the best wrestler in the world. If he defeats The Rock at the Royal Rumble and The Rock and John Cena in this uh, three-way match that I'm envisioning, then I'll come on here and put it over the microphone that CM Punk is the best wrestler in the world. No DVD or Blu-ray, no WWE 13 commercial, no T-shirt is going to make me believe that CM Punk is the best wrestler in the world, especially with these promos and how he's been disrespecting legends as of late like Jerry Lawler and Mick Foley and The Rock. Uh, is going to make me believe that CM Punk is the best wrestler in the world. Maybe if Hulk Hogan did it during his WCW run as part of the NWO, I believe it because of his legacy. Uh, but I don't think that this is a Hulk Hogan heel turn by any means. Comparing CM Punk to Hulk Hogan would be an insult uh, to the wrestling industry, period. So I refuse to believe that CM Punk has reached the status of a Hulk Hogan or a Bret Hart as champion, even though he surpassed their reigns from 91 and 94. No t-shirt, no WWE 13 commercial, no DVD, which is available now from WWE Home Video. CM Punk, best in the world, with never before heard interviews, never before seen footage and comments from CM Punk himself on his career and his successes, is going to make me believe it. Beat The Rock at the Royal Rumble, and beat The Rock and Cena in a three-way at WrestleMania 29, which I hope we see over the next few months. Until you beat The Rock, who's one of the greatest of all time, until you beat John Cena, who's been representing the WWE as an enterprise the way he has over the last ten years, I refuse to believe or buy into the fact that CM Punk is the best wrestler in the world. This is my ultimatum, uh, what I'm putting out on the microphone for CM Punk. If the t-shirt says that he's the best in the world, if the name of the DVD is CM Punk Best in the World, and CM Punk absolutely has to be in the WWE 13 promo, which you can see on our Twitter. If CM Punk has to be overpromoted, this is my ultimatum. Defeat The Rock, who is one of the greatest of all time at the Royal Rumble, and defeat The Rock and John Cena in one of the biggest three-way matches to ever happen at WrestleMania, which is an event we have seen more triple threat matches at than any other WWE pay-per-view event over the last 25 years. CM Punk needs to defeat The Rock, that's the first step, and beat The Rock and Cena in a three-way, which makes perfect sense, and then I'll believe that CM Punk is the best wrestler.